and we are live. If you already know who it is, my name is Mike Kyle, aka the Fantasy Vulture. I have over a decade worth of fantasy football experience and have continuously competed for fantasy championships over the course of the past six seasons. That's going to get seven in 2020, but enough of me. I'm here for you on today's episode of the FB Show. We're going to do something a little bit different, and this is a video that I've wanted to make for a long time, but I finally have the opportunity to show you how I prepare for my fantasy football matchups when it comes to Monday night football games. So if you guys are excited for this for this video, I was going to say this game preview, but that's not that. Uh, be sure to hit that like button down below and also smash that subscribe button like a power running back up the middle so you never miss a video from me. Last but not least, of course, you can follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture, specifically Twitter. I love to answer your start sick questions, trade offer, waiver wire pickups, and anything else fantasy football related over there. So we're going to jump over to my matchup for the week. This is a standard, uh, this is a 10 team standard scoring format league. Uh, I am the Vultures, obviously, um, and I'm currently up by 9 points, essentially 10. Going into Monday night, I had a bit of a down week. I lost Austin Eckler. Ronald Jones didn't find his way into the end zone. Robert Woods and the Rams had a dud game. Allen Robinson played well in garbage time. Uh, but basically, now it's going to come down to, for me, Hayden Hurst and Todd Gurley versus Aaron Jones and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And I tweeted about this late, late last night when uh, this idea popped into my head. And I said, I'm up nine points facing Aaron Jones and Clyde, and I'm going to win. And here is how I'm going to do that. So this is really what I want to focus in on real quick, all right? So I'm not too concerned about projections. You guys see Hayden Hurst uh, is projected 6.5. Todd Gurley is projected uh, 11, 11.8. And Aaron Jones going up against Atlanta is projected 16. And Clyde is projected 14. So here's the thing that I always try and analyze first. I always try to analyze what the matchups are going to look like. So, for example, it's going to essentially come down to Todd Gurley versus Aaron Jones and then Clyde Edwards-Alaire and then Clyde Edwards -Alaire versus Hayden Hurst, okay? And obviously, Clyde is going to outscore Hayden Hurst. But what are the ways that I can try and negate this and keep this lead the best I possibly can, right? So, first off, I want to pull up Clyde real quick. And here's the thing that I want to go over. I want to go over his fantasy points during the first... Uh, three weeks of the season. So we got, uh, let's scroll down just a little bit more. Sorry about that. All right. So we see uh, it is 19.8 in week one, seven flat in week two, and 13 in week three. So I know on the low end, it's going to be seven. On the high end, it's going to be 20 because we know the way that it's because we know the way that this Chiefs offense rolls. So I'm actually going to safely assume again that Clyde is going to score 13 fantasy points. Right, I feel like that's just a very nice middle ground, a very safe number. That's not too high, not too low, and just about right for a pretty good Patriots defense. Um, so we're going to assume that Clyde gets 13, okay? And then we're going to look at Todd Gurley. And Gurley, for the, through the first three weeks, has had 11.7, 6.1, and 14.2. Um, again, I fully anticipate with the workload that he gets, his ability to get into the end zone. This is going to be a high scoring game. And the fact that he's also going to, you know, get some rushing yards as well. You guys can look at the numbers there, 56, 60, 56, 61, and 80. I feel like a reasonable expectation for Todd Gurley tonight is going to be 11 fantasy points, which means I, at this point, I am now only, uh, I'm giving up two points. So I'm up seven, right? Uh, 13 minus 11 equals two. Um, and then I'm up nine. I'm basically up 10. Like I said, we'll, we'll just roll with nine. I'm up nine points. Um, and so that's going to be a difference of seven. Here's where things are going to get complicated, though. Aaron Jones could potentially crush Hayden Hurst. Um, Hayden Hurst has not played to the level that I've expected him to. Obviously, with this uh, Falcons offense, anything is possible. But we know what Aaron Jones' involvement is going to be for the Packers, right? And this is where my strategy comes into effect. And I'm going to try and negate Aaron Jones to the best of my ability while also giving my team an increase in, in production and the possibility for points, right? Because on paper, I am supposed to lose this matchup facing two running backs, starting one and a tight end. So here's what I'm actually going to do. I'm actually going to scroll up to players and we are going to pick up a tight end instead. And the tight end who we're going to pick up is going to be Robert Tanyan of the Green Bay Packers. 
And so we're going, I didn't know I have to drop a player. Let's load this up. And unfortunately, I can't drop anybody who's already played, uh, unfortunately, because they are all supposed to be locked. I'm not sure why it's actually letting me do this right now. Um, but I'm going to drop Hayden Hurst. And I'm going to drop Hayden Hurst for Robert Tanyan. And here's the reason why. Not only can I, I'm actually going to see if I can pull this up right now. Um, let's go to uh, fantasy points against, there we go, 2020. So here's the first reason why this is such an important decision for me to make. This is fantasy points against the tight end position in 2020. The Atlanta Falcons are giving up 15 points to this position. And if we were to go back to Robert Tanyan, and we scroll down here, scroll down just a little bit more. Tanyan, the past two games, has scored a touchdown. He's also uh, getting anywhere between 25 and 50 yards. So I know for a fact that this is going to be a high-scoring game, and the Falcons give up the second most amount of points to the tight end position, right? That was second. Yes, it was second behind the Saints. So I like the probability. Oh, actually, I need to scroll. I need to scroll down just a bit more here. Right, so you can see two, two touchdowns in back-to-back -back games. Uh, also, the receiving yards as well, 25 and 50. Especially with no Devontae Adams and no Alan Lazard, Tanyan is going to be a featured uh, point in this offense this week. But here's the other reason why I'm going to do this. I want to... Let's go back up to the matchup here. Load up. Thank you. The reason why I wanted to do this as well is because I know for a fact that Todd Gurley and Hayden Hurst can't score on the same drive, right? It's just one of those things where only one of them can score on the same drive. And basically what that comes down to is the fact that um, I'm almost cutting my production in half in a way because of the sense that they can't score on the same drive. They obviously can't score on the same play, let alone that, right? And they're only going to get the ball, let's say, 24 minutes, right? If this game was an even, or I'm sorry, for 30 minutes. If this game was an even split uh, down the line 50-50, the Falcons are only going to have the ball for 30 minutes. So what adding Robert Tanyan does for me is no matter who is on the field, whether it's Green Bay's offense or it's Atlanta's offense, I have the opportunity to score fantasy points. So all these things considered, all these things just jumbled up into one. The Falcons defense is trash, especially against the tight end position. And then also, instead of going from two players who have the potential to score for 30 minutes, I now get two players with the potential to score at any given point in this game. And to me, that is one way to guarantee that you are going to minimize the effects of Aaron Jones, right? So even before, right, I was projected, well, again, projections don't mean much when I think of things like this. I was projected to lose by three, and now I'm projected to lose by six. But for me, I want the opportunity to score on every single play. This is like, these are the things that I talk about a lot, okay? I've had the conversation with multiple people uh, in Twitter DMs saying, I approach fantasy like a game of chess, but also the giant math problem, okay? It's a combination of, of it's a combination of both. For me, this is the epitome of me trying to make a chess move. I'm trying to think two steps ahead of you, and I want to put myself in the best possible position in order to either negate somebody or also to find a way to put my team a, a step above if I have to. So again, just one more time. I had Hayden Hurst. I'm going to drop Hayden Hurst for Robert Tanyan, and I'm starting Tanyan because one, the Atlanta Falcons offense or the Atlanta Falcons defense is terrible. This game should be a shootout. He scored a touchdown in back-to-back -back games. There is no Alan Lazard. There is no Devontae Adams. But then, even more importantly than that, Robert Tanyan. And Todd Gurley being on opposite teams guarantees me the opportunity to score fantasy points every single second this game is played, as opposed to 50% of the game with just Hayden Hurst and Todd Gurley. And that's it. That is literally all I'm talking. Whoops, that's the wrong screen. There we go. That is like that's it. Fantasy for me is a game of chess. It's a game of math. And this, I love that I was able to show this off because I do shit like this all the time i've done it for thursday night games i've done it for sunday night games and i do it for monday night games every single chance i get um a lot of people will say things like points are points it doesn't matter when you get them 
And while theoretically, like, that is true, I like trying to approach things like this because it, it forces you to think differently and because we all know that points aren't points, right? Aaron Jones has a higher ceiling than both of these players combined. Uh, so that's different. So, like, I need a swing for the fences play in regards to that. Um, whereas opposed to, let's say if it was, for example, let's just say Keelan Cole, who's on my opponent's bench. If it was Keelan Cole, I'd probably keep um, Hayden Hurst in because I feel like that Hurst can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Keelan Cole. Uh, but just for an example like this where I know I'm facing two great running backs uh, with a great running back of my own, I needed that additional bump and that additional angle to try and secure some fantasy points and maintain my lead. Um, I'm really excited to see how this shakes out. This is nothing new for me. Again, I try and do these things as often as I can if I feel like my team is in the position where I have to make such a move. And I think it's really just a different way of looking at fantasy football on a matchup-by-matchup -matchup basis instead of a totality. Um, you know, in fantasy, the thing that I, one of my, one of my favorite lines that I say is that you can't play defense in fantasy, right? It's the reason why uh, my Dynasty League hashtag rewards scoring, because we know that there is no such thing as fantasy defense. This, this is the closest I can do. This is the closest anybody can do with playing defense in fantasy football. And that's what we're going to try and do tonight, Monday night versus the Packers uh, and the Atlanta Falcons. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this really provided some insight as to some of my weekly uh, process, just trying to figure out start sit questions and things like that. This is something, again, I, tr I don't do this. I don't do this because I want to. I do this because I have to. And I do this because it makes sense to me and trying to expand my win probability to the highest it can be, especially if I am facing two top 10 running backs. Uh, this week going into Monday night. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. Try to do this uh, multiple times a week. And by multiple, I mean like 20 plus videos uh, every single week for fantasy football. You guys can also follow me on all social media platforms at FF Vulture. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. Remember, people come and go, but fantasy championships are forever. And I will see you in the next video.